There's many different ways to finish a subwoofer enclosure. We could paint it, we could stain it, but in my opinion, one of the best ways to finish a custom subwoofer box is to make it match the inside of the vehicle. We're gonna be using materials like carpet and vinyl and leather, but in order to use different upholstery materials, there's a lot of different tricks to make the box look perfect. We have to account for the thickness of materials and think about where we're actually going to hide the different seams so that they're not shown. We also need to know how we wrap around corners so that we don't end up with any wrinkles. So how can we do this on the custom layered style subwoofer box that I'm working on right now? Let's dive in and find out. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. If you're new here, here on this channel, I do car audio reviews, I do lessons, and I do build bug videos like this video. I actually have a whole series playlist of making this subwoofer box, so be sure to check that out. And if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. So here's the subwoofer enclosure, and in order to prep for everything, you can see here I have a brush, I have some contact adhesive. I'll link this particular adhesive that I really like to use down in the video description. I also have some upholstery vinyls that I'll be using, and I've of course need some scissors, an Ulfa knife, and I'm sure there'll be a couple other things along the way, but this is the basic stuff that you're gonna need. Now let's talk about some of the preparation that I've actually done to this enclosure during the woodworking steps of the process. On the back side of all my different pieces, you're gonna notice that I have a step like that. The reason for this step is so that when I wrap the material around, I can actually wrap it all the way around and secure it to this back side. And because of that step, the box will go back together as originally intended. This material does actually have a thickness to it. It's about a 32nd of an inch. And even though it's only a 32nd of an inch, if it weren't for that gap, this would actually push this off the front of the box. It just wouldn't look quite right. Now something else that I've done in between videos here, you can see I have these two grooves here. And what I did to add those is I actually measured out my lines first. Once I had those lines measured out, I used a straight template and template taped it to the enclosure. And then I took out my plunge router and I put in a little straight bit. This straight bit allows me to simply make straight cuts so riding along the edge of the template, I made two separate grooves. The reason for these grooves is I'm actually going to be using this little piece of metal and I can push it down into the gap once the vinyl is on there and it will just give us a nice, unique little look. So I've got those grooves added and you can also see here that I've added another step around the outside of the box. I did that during the woodworking process. And for other pieces like this, like around my port, I knew that I needed to have a transition from vinyl to vinyl. So I used some body filler in order to make a gap. If you guys wanna see all the details on how I did all this stuff, it's in other videos within the playlist for this box build. Now I've also got my whole work area protected here. That way I don't get any of the adhesive on my table, but let's get started. I'm probably gonna do a lot of this video as a voiceover because I'm going to be having my mask on so that I'm not inhaling any of these fumes. Now this step here is something that's definitely not required, but I feel that doing it really adds a nice finished touch once you're done with the enclosure. What I'm actually doing is applying masking tape to the back side of these pieces and then trimming away all of the areas that I want the glue to actually be applied to. This way I don't end up with any excess glue on areas that I don't want the adhesive. And once we're done and we peel away the tape, it just gives us a much more professional finished look. Even though it's just the back side of the panel that you'll never really see, I know that it's there, so I want it to be perfect. I repeat this process on all of my pieces. Now it's time to start applying the upholstery adhesive and you can see that I've already pre-cut out a couple of pieces of vinyl material and laid them on my work surface. I'm outlining the shapes so that I can then remove the piece and fill it in using my brush. Now yes, I'm using a brush in this video, but you can absolutely also use an air gun to do so. I have a video about that, I'll link it up in the corner on screen. Now that the adhesive is applied to all of my vinyl pieces, I now apply it to all of the wooden pieces themselves. This adhesive is a contact adhesive, so I'm actually going to let it dry on the wood and the vinyl before I stick the two pieces together. Once the adhesive is dry to the touch on both pieces of material, I can stick the two pieces of material together and apply pressure to lock the vinyl in place. To work the vinyl around corners and curved parts of the outside perimeter, I can cut relief cuts. Now some of my pieces are designed so that I have to wrap some of the material around the back side of the piece, so I'll apply adhesive on the back and allow it to dry as well. 
Once these pieces are completely wrapped, I can use the step that I made earlier during the woodworking process to precisely cut the edges of the vinyl. My two front baffle pieces go together perfectly because I've accounted for the material gap between the two during the woodworking process. Applying the upholstery vinyl to the box itself is a similar process, I just need a much larger piece of material. With the adhesive on the box and the vinyl dry, I can now carefully wrap the vinyl around the enclosure and lock it in position. Again, it's a matter of carefully positioning the vinyl into the different details and then using the woodworking cuts that I've made earlier to precisely cut the outside edges. The box is looking good, but I still need to add that last little bit of detail so I can start applying upholstery adhesive to the back of my white piece of vinyl. I also apply upholstery adhesive to the front of the enclosure, and once it's dry, I can start laying it into position. And what I'm going to do is actually carefully lay it into the grooves that I created earlier. Once the vinyl's in position, I carefully push the aluminum metal rods into the groove. Now all I have left to do is apply the front baffle and attach the subwoofer. So here we have it. With all the finishing touches put in place, we now have the completed custom layered style subwoofer enclosure. I really like the way that this box turned out. Even though it's the same vinyl on most of the box, I feel like the lines give it a really nice sleek look and the accent with the white really matches the custom amplifier rack. So in the next video, I'm going to be installing these into the vehicle. We'll do some listening to the system and testing of everything and I'll of course show you guys everything completely installed in the vehicle so we can get a final look at what this build turned out to be. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't seen the other videos that are part of this build yet, you can see them here on the playlist on screen. As always, a special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Jerry, EJ, Emmanuel, and Truman, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to those guys for helping crowdfund the making of these videos. Thank you again for watching.